What's up, Giants fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. And in this video, I'm making my official 53-man roster projection for the New York Giants in the 2024 season following a 1-2 and two preseason for Big Blue, um, a preseason where they lost to the Jets, um, a difficult loss on Saturday night. Tommy DeVito played the whole game. The offense did not look great. Uh, the defense got beat a couple times, but I'm excited to get into my key takeaways. Um, possibly some players who earned their right to this year's roster in that game against the Jets. So I'm very excited to talk about it, folks. If you are new and checking us out for the first time, make sure to follow us on all of our social media channels on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Big Blue Avenue. We appreciate all of your support, and we're excited to announce that we're going back to our live weekly shows next week. Sam Cardona and myself, Tom Scavetta, will be previewing the week one Minnesota Vikings game. Very excited about that. So we've got a lot in store for you folks this season. But without further ado, let's get into the Giants roster projection, the initial 53-man. Um, this is subject to change. This is fluid. We know over the past couple of years, the Giants have made waiver claims. Um, pretty much every year this happens. So this initial 53 will likely not be the 53 you see week one against the Minnesota Vikings as the Giants kick off their 100th season in franchise history. So without further further ado, let's get into it. So first and foremost, I think the Giants carry three quarterbacks this season on their 53-man roster. That includes Daniel Jones, Drew Locke, and Tommy DeVito. Um, I was a little bit on the fence about whether or not the Giants would carry three, but you know, I think the veto is a guy that knows the scheme. He knows the Giants system. You don't want to risk him getting claimed off waivers. It's pretty much a guarantee that he would get picked up by another team, according to multiple sources. Um, and this was interesting, too. I just found this out today. Tom Pelissero mentioned that as teams construct their initial 53-man rosters, teams were informed by the NFL Players Association that the revised emergency third quarterback rule was vetoed, which means teams would have allowed to um, would have allowed themselves to elevate a bona fide quarterback from the practice squad an unlimited number of times. That rule is not into effect this year. It's pretty much reverting back to the 2023 version, which basically, folks, means the emergency third quarterback must be on the 53 man roster. It cannot be an elevation. So, in other words, um, it's complicated. But it basically means that Tommy DeVito was all but guaranteed a roster spot with the Giants. I think he would have made it regardless due to the injuries to Drew Locke, um, you know, dealing with his hip. And, of course, Daniel Jones coming off the ACL and neck injuries last season. So three at quarterback. Um, next up, the running back position. I have three here. Devin Singletary, Eric Gray, and the rookie Tyrone Tracy Jr. out of Purdue. Tracy has flashed a lot in the preseason. Um, he did suffer a significant injury um, in training camp. I believe it was between the Lions and the Texans preseason games. So it was definitely very alarming. But Tyrone Tracy is medically cleared and he's not on the injury report. So that's great news for the Giants. Um, Eric Gray could have been on the bubble at the start of preseason, but he did a great job against the Lions and the Texans in preseason play. And, of course, Devin Singletary is the new 2-6. In New York, a guy who has familiarity with Brian Dable and Joe Shane. So very excited to see what's in store for the Giants running back room this season. Um, I had Turbo Miller missing the cut with hopes that he comes back on the practice squad. I think the Giants did a good job not overexposing him too much, but getting him reps. That dude is quick. I really hope he's a part of the team this season. But for this initial 53, I allocated more resources and spots towards other positions than the running back position. The, it is a passing league now. Next up at wide receiver, I have six. Now, I've been teetering between one receiver spot for the last couple of weeks. We know Gunnar Olszewski has that groin injury he's been dealing with. But Isaiah McKenzie has not looked good in preseason at all. So I have... Malik Neighbors, Darius Slayton, Wandale Robinson, Jalen Hyatt. Those are the four obvious ones. 
have Miles Boykin making it as a gunner on special teams. I don't love the fact that I have to put Miles Boykin in over two receivers who are obviously better than him at the position, but with new special teams coordinator Michael Gobriel, it seems that the Giants have a place on this team for Miles Boykin, and I have Gunnar Olszewski beating out Isaiah McKenzie, who did get hurt in the preseason game against the Jets. Um, not a good sign. He was pleading his case, and apparently, I think it was Art Stapleton was saying, you know, Gunner's their guy if he's healthy, um, and he seemed to be pretty upset when he was hurt. You know, you feel bad for the guy. He's very likable amongst this coaching staff, especially former Bill with Brian Dable there, but um, you know, McKenzie is new to the Giants, and quite frankly, he had two fumbles in the preseason on punt returns. So definitely not the ideal scenario there. So I have Olszewski beating out Isaiah McKenzie. So six receivers, Isaiah Hodgins and Allen Robinson are not making the cut for me. Um, Hodgins still had decent production last year, but if you think about it, guys, Malik Neighbors replaces Isaiah Hodgins, right? Um much better production. Malik Neighbors is a bona fide number one receiver in the NFL, possible future all pro and pro bowler. But the point I'm trying to make is last year, Slayton Robinson and Hyatt were one through three. Now you add Neighbors in and that's one through four eaten up right there where Hodgins is no longer your number four. So that spot's gone and five is going to special teams and six, the kick slash punt returner and Olszewski. Allen Robinson's a veteran. He he was pretty good in the preseason, but right now there's not a spot for him. Other than Olszewski, I think the receiver room is pretty healthy, especially amongst the top four. There's nobody dealing with injuries right now. Darius Slayton entering his sixth NFL season is the veteran of that group. I don't see Robinson bringing much more that Slayton doesn't as far as being a vocal leader. I think if Slayton was maybe – three or four years younger, then yeah, of course, I think Robinson would be a great option. But um, yeah, it sucks because I put Robinson over Hodgins, but the cards don't fall in that place. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they turn around and say, we want a seventh receiver or Boykin, you're out. Robinson, Hodgins, you're in. Who knows? But these are my six. Next up, um, a little different for me at the tight end position than what a lot of people have been reporting. I have four tight ends making this team. I have Daniel Bellinger, Theo Johnson, Chris Manhurts, and Jack Stoll. Now, immediately, and I know what you guys are thinking, why do you have two blocking tight ends that are pretty much primary blockers making your 53-man? Well, um, the answer to that is Jack Stoll was the team's leading receiver against the Jets on Saturday night. He is a phenomenal blocker. If you watch him, he played every snap in that Jets game. He's a former Philadelphia Eagle. There's a tie there with him and receivers coach Mike Groh. I know he's a tight end, but Stoll is improving in the receiving game. And there is a rookie in the room with Theo Johnson who did battle an injury this past offseason. And uh, Chris Manhurts is 32 years old, so it's not like he's getting any younger. Um yeah, I like him over Jakob Johnson. I don't see Jakob Johnson making it. You know, Stoll is healthy. Um, he made the Eagles roster his first three seasons in the NFL. And I think, you know, Nick Sirianni in Philadelphia did a very good job utilizing him. So I have Stoll and Manhurts making it. It was either going to be Manhurts and Johnson or or Jakob Johnson, that is, Manhurts and Jakob Johnson, or Manhurts and Stoll. And for me, it's Jack Stoll. He's the better player of the two, in my personal opinion. In fact, I think Stoll is better than Manhurts at this point in his career. 26 years old, Manhurts 32. Stoll is more of a receiving threat as well compared to Manhurts. That's not his primary specialty, but you guys get the point. So, so far, three QBs, three running backs, six receivers, four tight ends, and I'm going with 10 offensive linemen. I'm going heavy offense here because the defense is decimated with injuries, and I think they're going to make waiver claims. I teetered between nine and 10 offensive linemen, but here is who I got. Andrew Thomas, John Runyon, John Michael Schmitz, Greg Van Roten, Jermaine Illuminor, Evan Neal, Aaron Stinney, Josh Azudu, Jay Kubis, and I do have Austin Schlotman making the initial 53-man roster. Um, Schlotman was signed to a two-year deal, but his deal is not as much as people are making it out to be. 
it's only around 2.2 or 2.3 million, something like that. So he could very well easily be cut and brought back on the practice squad if he clears waivers. But right now, the depth is definitely a concern for the New York football giants. They went out, they signed Runyon, Van Roten, and Illuminar via free agency this offseason. Aaron Stinney as well. You know, they really don't trust what they had in their offensive line last season. John Michael Schmitz has been dealing with injuries throughout preseason. Concern is, for me, if he goes down, who's going to play starting center? Are you going to move Runyon or Van Roten in at center? I don't think so. Schlotman needs to be a true backup center on this team. The Giants haven't had a true backup center since 2022 when they had Feliciano and Nick Gates. We saw how not having a true backup center fared out for their offensive line last year when John Michael Schmitz went down in week two or week three with that injury. So, yeah, I have 10 O-linemen making it. Um, Zudu, I don't love the fact that he's making it, but he was a third-round draft pick. They don't want to give up on him yet, in my personal opinion. Evan Neal, um, the experiment as a starting tackle in, in the NFL should be over. It's possible they could bring him in as a guard if somebody goes down or a potential swing tackle role. Um, his starting days in the NFL are done. In my opinion, he was a bust of a draft pick, even though he's only entering year three. Um, his footwork, his intangibles are just not there at this point, but I do think there is enough there, first round draft pick, to definitely say he's making this roster as a backup. Uh, Jay Kubis, impressive UDFA out of North Dakota State. I don't want him exposed to waivers at all. He's been phenomenal this offseason. Uh, I tip my hat to Jay Kubis. That's the first UDFA I have making the initial 53 man. So moving over to the defense, I have five interior defensive linemen, Dexter Lawrence, Nacho, Riley Davidson, and the sensational UDFA of the 2024 preseason and training camp, Elijah Chapman out of SMU. He was a rookie minicamp tryout. He didn't even dress on Saturday night against the Jets. He's definitely making this squad. We know the Giants waived the injured DT Ryder Anderson, who's a former UDFA in his own right. Not sure if he'll return on the practice squad when healthy or what they'll do to him. Maybe transition him to IR. I'm not sure. Or they just let him walk. Jordan Phillips was traded to the Cowboys a little over two weeks ago. And yeah, I think this is the five right now. Originally I had Davidson out, but I don't feel comfortable going into the season with just four interior defensive linemen where Shane Bowen's defense is high on stopping the run. Um, I think these are the best five. You know, I flirted with Casey Rogers and Timmy Horn, but unfortunately Timmy Horn got hurt. He got carted off the field. Uh, Casey Rogers is a really good practice squad player. I think the Giants can develop him there. And if not for Chapman, Phillips would probably still be here, to be honest with you. He chased Phillips out of town by his play, and I think Davidson barely makes this team because he has not looked good either since being drafted. He's pretty much struggled since his rookie season dealing with that injury. So, yeah, we'll see what happens here. And I think the concern for the Giants in next year's offseason, not to jump too far ahead, is getting a young, fierce option next to Dexter Lawrence, whether in the draft or free agency. So that is definitely going to be a concern for the Giants. The depth at this position could be a potential waiver claim as well. Next up, I have four edge rushers. I do not have Benton Whitley making the roster. I have Kayvon Thibodeau, Brian Burns, Zizo Jolari who might get traded possibly entering a contract year and Boogie Basham. Um, Basham has played well enough for him to stick around. I think it would be silly to cut him, especially after since the Giants gave up, you know, a little bit of draft capital for Boogie in a trade a year ago. Um, I don't think he's been bad this preseason. The argument for Whitley is he provides more special teams value than a guy like Basham. Um, but right now, this is my four. I think these are the four best pure edge rushers on this team. I think Basham is more of a plus run defender as well off the edge. You know, he's learned a lot from Brian Burns, and he has a little more experience than a guy like Benton Whitley, who is a little more green and I think could fit in well on the practice squad. However, if Aziz Ojolari gets traded, move up Benton Whitley to that fourth edge rusher position. Uh, next up, inside linebackers. I only have five. Uh, some people have six. 
And I have Bobby O, Micah McFadden, Carter Coughlin, Darius Muisau, and Matt Adams. So, again, Matt Adams, another guy, a core special teamer. I don't love the fact that he's making the 53, but, you know, he's been that guy in the past for the Cleveland Browns. He's done a very good job. The Giants lost Cam Brown to the Miami Dolphins via free agency this year, so they brought back Carter Coughlin, and they bring in Matthew Adams. I view that as the Carter Coughlin-Cam Brown duo. Um, John Agorgu is still the inside linebackers coach for this team, and with Shane Bowen's defense, he highly emphasizes the use of his two starting inside linebackers. They must be smart players. I think Muisau is the next guy in if somebody gets hurt. I originally had Deontay Johnson making the roster before he got hurt. Um, he got hurt in the preseason. I don't know if he's going to be ready, so I'm basing this off of who I think is healthy and who has the experience. Coughlin and Adams bring a lot more experience than Deontay Johnson, and Coughlin is capable of playing the linebacker position if asked. So those are my five inside linebackers, and, and don't forget – Isaiah Simmons, who I have making the team at a different position, can also slide into this role as well. So next up, I have five corners making this team. Tay Banks, Cordell Flott, Drew Phillips, Nick McLeod, Trey Hawkins. We don't know the extent of Flott's injury. Uh, Flott's injury excuse me, He's been dealing with a shoulder problem. Um, Drew Phillips has really impressed. Nick McLeod might be the starting CB2 if no one is claimed and if Flott's not ready for week one against Minnesota. Uh, Trey Hawkins draft pick from last year. I think he makes the team as the final corner. I have Darnay Holmes missing the cut. Um, I don't love the fact that Trey Herndon is missing the cut, but I do think the Giants only keep five corners at this time. I think they look to add via a waiver claim, so I don't want to stack the back end of the corner depth chart with guys who could easily be replaced. So if that makes sense, I think that these are the five corners that are most likely to make it with Darnay Holmes and Trey Herndon just barely missing the cut. Maybe Darnay ends up on the practice squad. I know his rookie contract just ended. He's one of the few Dave Gettleman draft picks remaining on this team in 2024. So we'll see where he goes from here. Next up, five safeties. Jason Pinnock, Tyler Newbin, Dane Belton, Isaiah Simmons, and Gervarius Owens over Alex Johnson, the UDFA out of UCLA, who has impressed, but um, Owens being the draft pick, getting healthier. Um, I think Geo is the best option here. Um, plus, I also don't want a ton of UDFAs making it right now. I have Jay Kubis and Elijah Chapman. Um I think if you're Shannon Dable, you have to roll with the draft pick and Javarius Owens. Um, Isaiah Simmons, more of a, a nickel guy, but you'll see him playing back at safety from time and time again. Uh, Belton right now is the incumbent over Tyler Newbin, but Newbin is starting to slowly get reps with the ones next to Pinnock. You know, I believe there is a real possibility there for Newbin to be the starter in week one. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much it there. And special teams, nothing to see here. Graham Gano, Jamie Gillen, Casey Kreider, uh, a bunch of vets making the team. Jude McCatnamy will be on the practice squad as the international player exemption. He will not count against the 16-man practice squad. So that is my 53-man roster projection, folks. Let me know in the comments section what you think below. Um do you agree with most of my selections? Do you disagree with any? Um, is there somebody I should have added that I didn't or somebody I should have kept off that I put on? Want to hear all your thoughts below in the comments section as cut down day continues to loom Tuesday at 4 p.m. All NFL teams must have a finalized initial 53-man roster for the 2024 season. Appreciate you all tuning into this video. Check us out on all of our social media on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Big Blue Avenue. Ring the bell for notifications. Give us a thumbs up. And without further ado, folks, let's go Big Blue.